Alright, today, starting the wiring process, just getting everything in place so I can run it through conduit, just trying to plan it out so I can have it uh, all kind of come together in one spot and be able to utilize the conduit the best as I can. So, this will all be run behind. the siding and everything but it's taken some thought because initially I wanted to run through these channels but they stop at certain points like there and right up in there so I'm just kind of having to run it behind with the conduit and I'll just have to play it by ear as I go I just got this 12 gauge um, THHN stranded and all I'm doing is doing it about an arm's length and then electrical taping it just to keep it together for when I put it in the conduit and just keeping things organized and labeled. I apologize I don't have a lot of great footage for this process of the build it is mainly just running a lot of this wire to rough areas where it will be concealed by the ceiling. Um, I'm running it right next to the beams that kind of run across the ceiling because that will butt up next to those. I have everything sheathed with a conduit and I'm connecting all this wiring for basically the lights, the different DC outlets, and then I will also rough run the Romex 12-2 for the AC wiring portion of it as well so that I have it all kind of laid out where it needs to be and making sure I have the wire links correct. I'll show later on kind of where I'll tuck away these wires and then also regarding the battery isolator um, I'll show you later on kind of how that leads out and where that'll get connected all right so servicing your secondary battery or auxiliary battery on these um, if you have one which I'm going to be using actually to help run my alternator driven uh, charging to my auxiliary battery, the third auxiliary battery, which will be the house battery. So what you have to do is first you take off the secondary battery uh, power cord, which is just attached with this lug here. So you take that off. Next, you want to take off the ground on the main battery, and then lastly, you want to take off the positive of the main battery, and then make sure that that's kind of tied up and off to the side. And then what I do is I just take a thing of bubble wrap and wrap that whole thing, so you make sure you're not going to touch the uh, the positive terminal, and then this will kind of keep this separate from leading power back into the main feed. Then going around to where the auxiliary back, back battery actually is, is underneath the metro door. And it's in this case, and you'll see the warning label. Okay, so when you're ready to lower it, you'll get your jacks in underneath the handles. You're going to need two jacks, and the reason why you want them on both sides is because you're going to want to drop the box down here in the middle and then you're going to set it on a wood block to where you can take off your safety straps but you'll keep on your safety straps while you're lowering it just to make sure it doesn't fall out of there and screw anything up so get your jacks underneath there you'll go in undo the bolts that are holding in the brackets on the back 
which are 13 mil and once you get those out it should fall your weight should fall on your jacks here and then you can start lowering each of these down a little bit at a time until you can get it down onto the block of wood in the middle so there's two bolts on either side of the battery case that are 13 mil so I'll just remove these first and see how it's just clipped in back there so I'm sure that should hopefully stay with that clip Underneath here, there's a channel that runs along. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't go past these pillars underneath, which I was hoping for. So I do have to run it outside and then back up and in. And there's these rubber grommets that you just pull out of these holes. And you, I'm running this 2 watt gauge big sucker through here. I pull it through by tying the sweet eater cable on this rung. And now I'm going to have to try and maneuver this up through here, which will go up into the cabin. So I'll use this to kind of try to pull it up, but this thing really has to be manipulated around and moved inch by inch because coming in here, um, you have to make space for it and make room and bend it and push it in. So. It's going to be slow, but I'll keep taping this up, this conduit up as I go. And that way it'll kind of act as a protective barrier in there. Alright, so I ran this line, which will connect to the battery, aka the alternator, which will help charge my house batteries, so I ran it down through this channel and the conduit through this and then this goes up into the cab unfortunately right here you can't pass through this channel which was a big bummer but it's okay got it up and now this enters into the back of the cab where I'll have my uh, my lithium battery isolator okay so I just put the lead for the charger the alternator charger that I'll have uh, in the vehicle just on the square end side and then I'll be able to tighten down on this side and then that should flush that out. First step I'm going to do is get it up on about a four inch block just so I can put the security straps back on both sides get those in then I'll at least have a safety net so fucker doesn't fall on my head or something when I'm down there. This should also help me get the clearance above to put the weeds on. I'm hoping. It's going to be a pain, but at least I have some clearance to still, you know, get my hands up in there and work. Alright, got the safety straps in, so at least it'll break its fall before it hits me in the fucking head. Alright, got both leads tied in, cut a little notch out for the cover to fit the new wire. Also cut a notch out of my hand trying to do it. Well, it wouldn't be a project without a little blood put into it, but now she's ready to get lifted up. Alright, so now I got a couple different jacks under both the handles, so I should be able to just slowly lift this thing up. 
I don't know how this is working, but it is. Um, we've got it pretty close to lined up, so I'm gonna start dropping in these bolts. There is a piece in the back that you have to hold flush because it is what you'll screw into. It kinda sucks, but uh, at least it's kinda holding where it is. Just be very careful when you're underneath here. I've got this side hand tightened in. I might want to adjust a little bit, so I'm not going to tighten all the way, but at least I know that it's kind of safe on this side. Even though the jack's there, I at least have those two bolts in place, so now I can kind of mess around with the other side and feel a little bit more safe. I, after a little finagling, I had to reposition the jack, but having those other bolts in the other side really helped me reposition that underneath. Of course, it was about a half inch shy in height, so got those two tightened. Now I just got to tighten the other side. Well, that went a lot smoother than the first time. The first time was an absolute nightmare. I mean, the thing's in such an awkward angle. You're trying to pick it up, you know, with one jack. Like, you really do need two jacks um, to get up underneath it, under the handles to kind of get in position. Once you get it all lined up, it, it goes right into place. You know, looking online, they're all like, Oh yeah, just throw it up on your fucking lift and bring in a transmission jack and just put it underneath there. It's like, oh yeah, you know, I've I've got a fucking got one in my backyard. No, I'm on uneven ass ground where I gotta fucking lay down plywood and boards underneath just to keep it level. So that's one way you can do it at home without all the expensive equipment.